Hi there. Welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 3. We're on Chapter 3, Trigonometric Functions. And in this lesson, we're looking at identity questions that involve sec, cosec, and cod. It's really just an introduction to these type of questions. In a couple of lessons' time, there'll be a more difficult lesson on the same topic. Now, you need to be able to do three things, really, with trig functions. You need to be able to prove identities. You need to be able to simplify expressions. And you need to be able to solve equations. Those are certainly the three main things. We'll be looking at the first two of those in this lesson, simplifying expressions and proving identities. Now, for the following questions, you will only need to use these identities. Sec is 1 over cos. Cosec is 1 over sine. Cot is 1 over tan. Tan is sine divided by cos. Cot is cos divided by sine. And sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1. Those you do need to know, uh, but nothing more complicated than those. Okay, two questions for you to have a go at. It asks you to simplify these expressions, which means if you use those previous identities, there should be a, a, much, a much simpler way of writing down what we have here. Pause the video, have a go yourself, and come back when you're ready. Okay. We'll have a look at these together. So the first question, sine times cot times sec. Always with identity questions, it isn't immediately obvious how to get started. Frequently, there are several options. You do have to be willing to have a go. Try something and see how it works. The more of these type of questions you do, the more you get sort of familiar with the type of patterns, the type of things that are likely to work. Now we've got three functions here, sine, cot, and sec. It's quite hard to do anything with sine, so we'll just leave that as it is. Cot is cos divided by sine, so it's worth writing it down like that. Sec is one divided by cos, so it's worth writing it down as that to see if it helps. And immediately, you can see that everything we've done there helps a great deal. We've got sine on the top, sine on the bottom. They'll cancel with each other. Cos on the top, cos on the bottom. They'll cancel with each other. So we've just got 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. So it simplifies a great deal. Second question is slightly more fiddly. You've got sine theta cos theta into sec theta plus cosec theta. Now again, you look at sine cos. There's not a lot that you can do with that, which is very simple. But sec and cosec, we can do something with that. Sec is 1 over cos. Cosec is 1 over sine. So that would be the first thing to try. With this type of question, if you ever get fractions being added together or taken away or multiplied, it's definitely worth adding them and seeing how that goes. It'll test your fraction work, this. So adding those two fractions, we'll get a common denominator of cos theta times sine theta. And on the top, we'll get sine theta plus cos theta. And again, you can quickly see that this is a fruitful approach for this question because we have sine theta cos theta on the top, we also have sine theta cos theta on the bottom. They'll cancel with each other, and that just leaves us with sine theta plus cos theta. Okay, the second example is approving an identity question. Now, the identity sign is a much stronger sign than the equal sign. The equal sign in part B is saying, see if you can find some value of theta where this works. The identity sign is saying this will work for every value of theta. Every single value of theta, this is true for. So it's making a very strong statement. And you're trying to prove that it's correct. To do this sort of question, you normally want to start with one side or the other. In this question, it'll be more helpful to start with the left-hand side. Try and manipulate the left-hand side until you get the right-hand side for the answer. Again, I'll let you have a go by yourself first. Pause the video. When you're ready, come back. OK, we'll have a look at these together. So the first one, prove that uh, cot cosec over sec squared plus cosec squared is the same as cos cubed. Now, as I said, with this question, it's much easier to start with the left-hand side than it is to start with the right. So I would start with the left-hand side and then see what we can change which may be fruitful. On the top, cot theta is cos over sine, so we could write that down. Cosec is 1 over sine, so we could write that down. 
And on the bottom, sec squared is 1 over cos squared, cosec squared is 1 over sine squared. Now, you don't know it's going to work when you start off like this, but you do have to try something. Looking at the top, these are just being multiplied together. Multiplication is the one easy thing with fractions. So that just gives you cos theta on the top and sine squared on the bottom. Haven't done anything with the 1 over cos squared plus 1 over sine squared yet. But we have now. Again, like the previous question, if you get an opportunity to add fractions together, take it, see where it leads. In this case, the common denominator is cos squared theta times by sine squared theta. And on the top of that fraction, we'll get cos squared plus sine squared. Now, that cos squared plus sine squared, that is equal to 1. So we can immediately simplify that line in the middle. Sine squared plus cos squared is 1. Then we've got a fraction divided by a fraction. A fraction divided by a fraction is the same thing as the fraction multiplied by the bottom fraction upside down, or multiplied by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. So that division means exactly the same thing as writing down the top, cos theta over sine squared, times by, and that is the bottom fraction upside down. Now, once we've done that, there's sine squared on the bottom, there's sine squared on the top. Those can cancel with each other. Cos theta times by cos squared theta is cos cubed theta, and cos cubed theta is the right-hand side of the identity. So we started with the left-hand side, we manipulated it using the various tree identities, and we've proved that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. If I had a bit more space, I'd probably write down, therefore, cos theta cosec theta divided by sec squared plus cosec squared is identical to cos cubed theta. There was a second part to this question. The most important word in the second part of the question is the very first word. If ever you see hence in a question, it always means the same thing. It's saying you can answer this question by any means that you choose, but there is one very easy way. And that very easy way will use what you did in part one. So it's a very big clue that you should use part one to try and do part two. You don't have to, but the easiest method will be using part one. So this is the equation that we're having a look at. Cod plus cosec over sec squared plus cosec squared equals eight. Well, in part one, we've been told that this is identical to cos cubed theta. So we can say that's the same equation as cos cubed theta equals eight. And that equation is simple to solve. Taking the cube root of both sides will give us cos theta equals 2. But there's an issue there. And the issue is that cos theta equals 2 has no solutions. Cos theta never equals 2. But if that equation has no solution, then neither does the one we started with. So therefore, cos theta plus cosec theta divided by sec squared plus cosec squared equals 8 also has no solutions. That's the question done. Okay, if you have the textbook, turn to page 56. Have a go at exercise 3C. For the moment, just have a look at questions 1 to 4 and questions 9 to 10. That is the end of the lesson. Uh, thank you very much for listening and cheerio.